Hey everybody, back with another video. This is going to be part two of the pole position cockpit. I'm getting it back going, filming some things out of sequence, obviously, but um, it is in the basement. I was lucky enough to have my uh, son um, around this past weekend to help me, and thank God um, I had him because I'm just going to show you. I didn't even know we were going to be able to get this. Um, into the basement. Let me show you the stairs coming into my it's basement. It's pretty narrow and as you can see there's like this little overhang right there too coming down because this is my bump out right there. So we got this darn thing down here and thank goodness I actually have double doors to uh, to maneuver it in here but um, actually I need to clean this area up but crazy. It was insane. I didn't know we were going to get it down here. Electric Dreams I did it. We got it down, man. This is freaking crazy. I'm going to show you the, <laughs> coming the other way here. It's like a walk-up basement kind of thing. So, just to kind of show you guys, I got some bushes and stuff, and boom. And then down the steps we go. Like that. I don't know how many that is, but it's pretty brutal. And then we got it in. So let me finish cleaning this thing up and working on different things. All right, about to wash this monitor. It is filthy, as you can see in there. I'm gonna hose it off and probably take it off the um, chassis off. It is a Panasonic TM202G. Um, and then also probably clean up the pedals. I'll have to de de disassemble that, clean up the coin, thing right there just clean it up a little bit um, and then we'll in the sun but this is why you take the time and remove everything I mean look at inside that speaker it's super gross same with that one looks like there was a little bit of moisture could be mouse piss on the bottom there so I'm gonna sand and clean that up a little bit but it's not that bad it's still I don't think it needs wood hardener I'm just going to clean it up and also replace this fan right here. All right, just filming some hazards of the hobby or the, um, let's see here. Can you see that? Oh, there you go. Screwed up my hand there. But um, I'm basically in the back of the cabinet. I'm cleaning, like trying to get every crevice, including like down there. When I lowered, when I um, moved it downstairs, there was actually, you can't see it now. I don't think, but um, I had to make a contraption for my vacuum cleaner just to get something in there to suck shit in there because there was mouse poop and stuff like that that kind of fell down towards this way because this is the way I was leaning the cabinet back. Um, and then in here, underneath the pedal, it's almost like sand. I mean, there's so much just dirt from shoes and, and stuff I'm getting in there with a little scraper here and some some glue that's just glue right there but um just getting in there trying trying to anyway and vacuuming it out so definitely a lot of nooks and crannies in this damn thing underneath the seat um you can't see it right now but underneath the seat there's like a big cavity that i had to try to reach a vacuum cleaner in it is a major pain in the ass if you want to really get this clean um, to get all the stuff out so anyway just showing you that cheers all right just documenting i've filmed i have a whole i'll link to the video um that i did about restoring these bricks i didn't really want to disassemble this but just because of the rust and stuff i'm going to completely take this apart de-rust the um the metal here and potentially replace the fuse holder clean all this up might might even desolder this i have to extend this line here that they just snapped off because it's like it's not even long enough to get down there whatever they did with that fuse it's jacked up so not going to film it just going to disassemble it and then i'll come back and um, test both big blues under load with the power supplies all right so i, I have this um out of the evaporust and you can kind of see that the anodized finished has definitely come off. 
um, after you wipe it. I've shown that in the previous video, but <clears throat> I'm just going to tape over these uh, stickers and then especially the and then maybe some light sanding and then I'm going to spray paint it. All right, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I figured I'd look at this monitor. One of the things that's nice about the uh, Matsushita 20, TM202, God, I can't talk ever. Um, the manual's great. So anyway, red, green, blue. Red is in pin six. I think I have it set up correctly. I washed this tube and some of the dag did come off on this lower part. You can see it right there on the lower part right there, but it's still, I think, fine as far as like the ground strap and stuff goes. I might paint some more dag on there but it's it's holding up i think good enough it didn't all come off so let me power this thing on oh it came on <laughs> i hear high voltage Let's see if we get anything i don't see jack All right, might have to check my brightness and I don't know, is that the focus? That's the focus, so that's not gonna do anything. Didn't sound like it shut off. I might have to end up testing B plus and stuff on this. All right, I think I might have left my battery on, so I'm just gonna check my TPG here real quick ground and I think I should have some voltage there nothing so I grabbed a new battery let's see what this is 9 volts place the battery Six point three, that's not good enough. Or at least I don't think it is. Yeah, we got um, registering point three volts now. So we had nothing there before. And that's with auto that's, yeah no that's right so that um that was our problem i think let me hook up back up to the monitor there we go it looks like i got a good image i just adjusted the screen and the brightness a little bit and then i'll go ahead and um i might recap this i'm, I'm not sure but we definitely are starting from a good spot so verifying b plus and all that stuff i'm sure it's fine all right, it's such an interesting monitor, and I did watch a couple other guys' YouTube videos. One being, oh crap, Delusional Arcade, I think. I think his name's Jason, actually, just like mine. But um, also Mike, Mike, who does a whole bunch of monitor repairs. So what I thought I would do is just read a couple things out of the monitor, because this is the best monitor manual out there, actually. But it says here... Hopefully, I'm zoomed in enough. Um, I just highlighted a couple of things like safety measures. Always ground the chassis first and only use one hand. This avoids the possibility of carelessly putting one hand on the chassis or ground and the other on an electrical connection. So when you see people like touching stuff and having one hand like in a pocket, um, this is actually, it's not where it comes from, but the manual is kind of insinuating that's a good thing to do. It says, to prevent fire or shock hazard, never expose this display to moisture. Now, obviously, we wash in the hobby. A lot of people wash these arcade monitors. Now, in this case, I washed it with a hose, and you can see I lost some of the DAG. And actually, I watched back a little bit of my video, and when I charged it, this cable actually got magnetized and pulled towards the monitor. So that could be because of that some of the missing DAG there that um, you're getting some electrical field there. So I might 
need to, I don't know. It's just interesting, and I don't know enough about it to know if it's completely bad or good. But you definitely don't want to lose the DAG. The Aqua DAG is what it's called, which is this, um, it's some type of uh, paint that um, is, I think it's, conduct, it's conductive, I think, or something like that. So, all right. The other thing that I read, it says in the discharging um, thing says when discharging the anode go from ground to the anode connection with a well insulated 20 kilovolt jumper allow two minutes to pass and then discharge the anode again that's something we talk about in the hobby a lot that um, you can discharge it with a screwdriver now we usually we just do a quick snap you know obviously with um, chassis ground which is usually the frame if the chassis is actually grounded to the frame um, and then you, you, you're not discharging to earth ground. You're basically just discharging between positive and negative, and, the, and you have the negative is the chassis, and the positive is obviously the anode. Um, and this is a giant capacitor, so you're just kind of bridging between positive and negative of a giant capacitor, which is the tube. I don't know if I've mentioned that before, but some, I, I learned about that on Clob, obviously. Um, so that's pretty interesting, and... But we never do it with a 20 kilovolt resistor and bleed it off slowly. We just snap it. But it's interesting, it says, wait two minutes and then do it again because the darn thing could uh, still be holding a charge. So I just found that pretty interesting. I wanted to highlight that part in the manual. I'm that the manual called that out, obviously. There's multiple voltages here. Um, the B plus that we want to adjust, is, that's adjustable anyway, is B plus number two. And we're going to do that in this video. I'm not going to cap it because I don't actually have a cap kit. And I'm not going to worry about it right now. The other thing is, I think it was in Mike's... Gosh, what? I can't think of the name of his channel right now. I'll link to it, though. And um, it talks about the CRT voltage being plus or minus... This heater voltage, plus or minus 6.4 volts AC. R, root mean squared, RMS. Plus or minus 0.2 volts. And um, he had a video where he replaced the flyback and it was not putting out the correct heater voltage and I've shown that before measuring heater voltage um, is not always super accurate when you're just using a multimeter I'm going to measure it in this video just to see if I can measure it with my meter um, or if I have to actually do it some other way um, let me see the you know 26 like Obviously, if you're replacing flybacks and, and the filtering capacitors and stuff, you really should use a high voltage probe and measure high voltage at the anode. But um, I might or might not do that in this video. And then it talks about, okay, the, the contrast control, which is, I'll just do an overview of the, um, of the chassis, I think, here real quick. Is there a diagram? It does have a you know diagram showing you what the different components are, but just to show you live, um, this is the neck board, this is the deflection board, this is the video amplifier board, you have your main chassis board, focus adjustment, screen adjustment is on the neck board itself, and then I found this is pretty interesting, there's these contrast pots that are supposed to be only adjustable at the factory, they're not supposed to be adjustable sometimes you'll see stuff on them I'm just curious because the it does it says they're not adjustable so I don't know if they're actually connected to anything or if we move them if it actually changes stuff these didn't oh gosh I'm not even filming it um, these did not have um, any um, hot glue or, or something or glue down so that's kind of interesting your width coil you have your um, I think what is it your brightness controls up here and there's a unique way we're going to go through that um, horizontal position, vertical position, uh, vertical size, vert vertical hold. And this is, I think, just a regular Panasonic TV chassis that they modified to have it work um, for Atari. Like Atari probably said, this is what I need capabilities in the chassis. And then P Panasonic removed all of the components that they didn't need so that's why you have this big main PCB that's really for a TV and they just modified it to work in an arcade or be not as adjustable you know I mean with specific criteria so 
It's kind of an interesting chassis and also an interesting TV tube. So a lot of people say, hey, is there any tube compatible with this chassis? Well, I don't know, but I would look for a Panasonic tube has a different neck pin out. It is a fat neck, but this is a CR30 um, and you cannot put a CR23, I think is the normal normal one that you would put on. It will not fit um, on that neck socket. So this is a little bit harder to do a tube swap on a Matsushita TM202G monitor. With that, um, I'm gonna power it back up. We're gonna check the B plus, make some adjustments, um, and kind of tune it in a little bit. All right, well, before I do that, um, the drive and your cutoffs are over here on the neck board, but they are super pain in the ass to get to. So I don't know how we're gonna adjust those. So, And it actually says, it doesn't even give you instructions on adjusting the screen voltage. I don't think it does, but we're gonna review that as well. All right, it here. looks, this monitor does look pretty good. I don't think I showed this. So even without really adjusting it and I've screwed with it a little bit, you can kind of see the cutoffs are good. You know what I mean? Because you got white, gray, black. So the cutoff levels look good. You have your different shades of scale there. So I know the tube is good. I probably don't need to put it on a tube tester. Um, the colors are just slightly off and we could adjust those, but I just wanted to show what it looked like here that it's working. But to test the B plus, we want to do it without a video signal. So turn that off. You see actually a gray screen there. And then we'll come back. All right, to test the B plus, you have to get on test point D91, which is right to the left of that white resistor right there. There's a little test point um, sticking up and there's usually a couple wires. Let's see if you can get in there. Right there. All right. So that's where your test point is. And it's so interesting, the directions here. It says, set the brightness R34 over here. Right there. This pot right here. Set this to maximum brightness, which I believe is actually to the left. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna look at that real quick. Is it to the, is it clockwise or counterclockwise? It's interesting. Um, and then it says remove. Okay, hold on. And then it says, um, yeah. So you want to do this without a video signal. Um, so I have my TPG turned off. Let's go ahead and power it up. And we actually have about 124 volts. So I know the, the B plus is likely to be good, but we haven't adjusted it for maximum brightness. And I'm curious if adjusting the screen does anything to the B plus voltage. I don't know. So yeah, I believe that is maximum voltage and you can hear the, the monitor whining a little bit when I did that. See the retrace lines that's maximum and this and clock so that's counterclockwise and if I go clockwise the B plus voltage actually raises let me see this thing get both in here real quick <laughs> isn't that crazy okay so the B plus voltage rises when I turn it clockwise, but the screen is blank, it's dim, right? And if I turn up the brightness, which doesn't make sense that it's counterclockwise, B plus voltage goes down. And that's full full screen it's retrace lines and everything isn't that totally doesn't make sense does it but let's see if it's the b plus is adjustable because this i'm following the directions oh look and I see something smoking 
And this is exactly what happened before. Oh, I think it's something. Hmm. I'm going to turn it down. What is smoking? Is it something on? Actually, it could just be dirt on the resistors. And so I, I'll post a thread on Claw. Like when I went to mess with this monitor previously, I think in my millipede cabinet, I saw this smoking and I didn't know where it was coming from, but it freaked me out. Um, but it could be just, you know, get dirt getting burned off of some of these resistors. And this whole process that they document in the manual just like is bizarre to me. It really is. Um, I still have the monitor on, it's 124 volts, and I am going to adjust the B+. Plus. Oh gosh, Let's see how do I do this? There we go. All right, it's supposed to be 123, but with maximum screen which is all the way to the left <laughs> it's, so, it's so crazy I don't get it yeah see it doesn't even adjust when I the the B plus voltage doesn't adjust when I have it turned all the way counterclockwise if I turn it all the way to the right, there, it adjusts fine. It's so weird. There's 123. Let me mess with this, the screen control here. Yeah, the screen control on the neck board does not seem to be adjust messing with the B plus at all. Very interesting. I don't get it. This whole, uh, I just don't get it. It's so strange. If I turn on my TPG. Yeah. I mean, we have a good, good screen, but the, the way the manual says to test the B plus, like creates the smoking condition, the monitor squealing, um, really doesn't make any sense at all so I guess just leave your brightness pot maybe they do want you to adjust it like leave it all the way to the right but that is the opposite of maximum brightness which is weird Drifting a, a little bit. And then it says, once you adjust it to 123, plus or minus, you know, some voltage, I guess. Like one or two volts, I think. But then you can return your brightness pot back to the original position. Which is right there. And then we turn on our TPG. We have an image. 
And it says not to adjust the screen, but screen voltage. But that's probably right. Right there is probably the right screen voltage. Interesting. All right, so I, I moved this. Actually, let me power it off. <laughs> I moved the uh, monitor to my bench here because I wanted to probe it with my oscilloscope, um, just messing around. But one of the things is with this B-plus adjustment and delusional Jason from um, Dell's Arcade or whatever. I think his name's Jason. Um, he had the same issue, and I've posted about this before. When you turn up this brightness pot full counterclockwise to full brightness, you end up getting some smoke, and I'm pretty sure it's these resistors on the color lines on the neck board. Um, because if I show on the schematic, hopefully you this is in focus, I don't know. Um, the, the, the brightness pot right here, R344, is kind of controlling the base, the common base voltage of the first transistors for each color, um, color amplifier. So, like you get, right now I don't have anything plugged in to the color signal, and it's coming in to its contrast pot which comes to the emitter of this transistor and the base voltage is is basically coming from the 12 volt line um, that like the B plus number three or four I can't remember but it's generating the 12 volt I think from the potentially from the transformer itself I'm not sure but uh, so that 12 volt comes from here all the way it's also kind of um, feeding the collector side through these resistors here. So like you have the 12 volt coming in and then that feel, feeds the collector of that transistor through this resistor, feeds the collector of that one, loops all the way around, comes through a transistor and then feeds the base um, through, the, through uh, another resistor. Um, and so the voltage on the anode side here hopefully this is focused, is around like two and a half volts. And then there's this, I think, a switching diode um, and then the resistor and it goes to ground. So when you're um, decreasing or you know going counterclockwise, you're basically decreasing the resistance to ground, which is therefore lowering the voltage, which then increases somehow the voltage, the amplification factor of each um, signal. I think that's kind of what's happening anyway. And then you come to the neck board, which obviously you have your screen voltage, which is setting, I think, your G2 voltage. I've mentioned that before. And you have your cutoff pots that's basically controlling your, your negative one, I mean negative one, negative G1 um, bias. Um, essentially I think or where the beam is getting cut off you got your cut off pot so anyway so what I was doing is and then I also figured out like how to actually adjust the you know controls on this neck board is they actually have holes in the neck board for the pot so when you're going to do a color balance or grayscale um, balance you want to come in here with your pot and turn your screen all the way counterclockwise from this side and the same with your RGB values here if I can so I'm going to turn them all counterclockwise I already did it actually like that and these your drive pots should be centered so in this case I don't know if you can see it but they're the line should be completely vertical um, when you plug in your tool it should be like completely vertical is centered basically like that I think that's pretty much right and with that then we can set our B plus voltage with this all the brightness all the way turned up without having so much voltage going on to our color lines that these resistors I think it's these resistors right here that start getting really hot 
um, but I'm not positive about that. So I feel like you need to set your screen, all your RGBs, fully counterclockwise, then come set your B plus voltage with your screen pot turned all the way up. And I'm just going to show you um, the voltage of that real quick. Let's do power on. There's my oscilloscope. I'm on an isolation transformer. And we're going to hook up right there. I'm hooked up on the back side here of this diode. D301. Uh, I'm hooked up on the anode side. And you can see I have 2.41 volts. And now I will adjust this. That's fully clockwise, right there, which would be basically increasing the resistance to ground. So it'll be, it's around like 9K or 10 it's a 10K pot. So this is the maximum amount of resistance going to ground. As, as I decrease the resistance I'm to ground, I guess letting more voltage go to ground, my screen gets brighter. As you can see, I have a little mirror there. And my voltage decreases all the way to about half a volt and I have like complete white screen and the monitor screaming a little bit it doesn't really like being in that position but you can see like I'm adjusting that voltage going to the video the amplifier of the color signals and at that point we need to we can test our B plus voltage which, um, let right, me pause. You see my B plus voltage. I'm hooked up. I showed that already. There's my little thing. Got my ground voltage. And now I'm going to turn my brightness pot all the way counterclockwise to full brightness. And at that point, I should be able to adjust my B plus voltage to 130. I mean, 123. go I'm just turning the pot right there and that's 123.1 and now I can turn this down my brightness which adjusts the the B plus voltage I, and I think that's I think what's happening and and this is why I think this is a a screwed up process that they document in the manual is as I p increase that load on that 12 volt line somehow that's impacting my B plus voltage like my B plus isn't able to keep up when I'm putting when I'm like putting so much load I think on the 12 volt line that's what I think is happening or the process what they really meant to say is turn it all the way clockwise and adjust your B plus voltage. They say turn it up to maximum brightness, but maybe they meant turn it all the way clockwise and, and the documentation is wrong. There's 123 on the nose pretty much and then I can adjust my brightness here. It's almost no impact, obviously, on either the, the image until I get to about right there. Oh, if you can see, like there. See, I can turn it all the way to the right. And my screen voltage is turned all the way down. So, yeah, it, it just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> the whole process doesn't make sense to me. Oh my god. So weird. That's maximum brightness. Alright, that that's how I'm going to do it, I guess. I'm going to follow the directions. Maximum brightness. Adjust to 123. 122.9. And then turn back my brightness to normal. And it increases basically a volt 
I, I don't know. Whatever. Now let's do the color right, balance. So for thing, your color though. balance, as I mentioned, you want to turn everything screen fully counterclockwise. No video signal. RGB cutoffs all fully counterclockwise, and we want these basically even. Oh, look, I'm pulling two amps with a the oscilloscope on. Um, all right. So now we want to turn our screen up until we get the first hint of color. There we go. And it's red, I think. You can barely see it. Yeah, I would say it's red with some retrace lines. Alright, there's some red, and I know you can probably barely see that, but now I don't want to mess with the red. I'm just going to turn the green up just a little bit right there, and then the blue. Now, obviously, if I put this on my tube restore, I would need to redo this process. So you get like a gray screen right there and then turn this down just a little bit Boop. like that and now we should uh, turn on our TPG and then see what As our color see looks there, like. There's my color signal looks good. And I'm able to focus it. I have a little mirror there in the back which makes I know it's difficult for you to see it but that's how I'm working on it but anyway I think the the monitor is pretty well adjusted I am not going to screw with it anymore one thing I did do is I adjusted all of the color contrast pots to their vertical position but measured each one resistance wise to ground um, I'll put it on the I'll put it on the right, tripod here see this. let me get my probes out. I have the monitor off. I'm going to go to resistance and oh, I guess I could have kept it on ground, whatever. But I'm just going to come to ground and then on each of my contrast pots, if I just come to the top one or the common or to the right. Actually, let me... So seven million, that doesn't sound right, is that right? Point eight, what the fuck? Oh, I got my, I got my TPG on, <laughs> that's why. Turned my TPG off, I was like, what the hell, why am I getting different? There we go. So without a video signal on, 1.05K, 1.054K, 1.056K. So they're pretty much, you know, within all being equal, I guess. And that's what, it doesn't really tell you in the book, like how to adjust these contrast pots, that they're supposed to be factory set. And I can only assume that the factory setting is to just kind of make them all equal, which that's what I attempted to do, but I am making an assumption there. All right. Um, let's put this monitor in the game, I guess. All right. Got the brick back together and uh, painted it metallic gold. And it looks pretty good. The Just masking off the um, stickers came out pretty decent there's a couple spots like right I could have done a better job masking it off or even doing it so 
the tape covers less of the of the uh, sticker and stuff. So, but anyway, much better. There's the underside of it right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and test the big blues on the bench. I wasn't going to, but I figured it's easier if I do have to replace them. I don't want to pull it back out of the game. I do have to replace this fuse. It says it's a seven amp. I pulled it out and it's a six amp. Actually is, what the heck? Is it four amp? <laughs> Did I put the wrong one in? <clears throat> Uh, interesting, I put the wrong damn fuse in there. Good thing I rechecked it. I'm going to recheck my fuses. It says this is um, supposed to be 25 amp, I think, in pole position. They actually have a 20 amp fuse in there. And um, 4 amp, 4 amp, tw 25 amp, 4 amp, so, and the 7 amp over here. And, and most of them were right, except for this is a 20 amp instead of a 25 amp. I did solder the wires and extended that cord there, that cable, and hopefully it's it's good because I soldered them directly to the fuse holder. The fuse holder I just um, put it in some uh, de-rust, evaporust, then cleaned it with a Dremel and a coat and cleaned it basically. Um, I think that's it. Let me um, get this ready to test and. Replace okay, I have everything fused up. I'll link to me testing these videos here, but I mean testing the voltages. Pin four to pin one, pin four or five is ground. One, 10 volts unregulated. Unregulated 10 volts, unregulated 10 volts. That's ground. Come to pin six and seven. Should have. 30 something volts AC, 36 volts AC, we do. And then 6.3 volts on pins eight and nine, 6.6 .6 volts. And then there's um, some looping going on here, but um, let's see, 72 volts from, I think that's pin 15 to pin 11 or something like that. There's 60 volts, 60 and 60, and it gets combined, I think. So this is fine. I'm going to hook up my AR2, and then um, we'll put a load on the 5-volt line and then measure ripple All voltage. Right, I have my little contraption set up. AC voltage on... Let's see here. Can... Yeah, it's easier to see it kind of like that. All right, AC voltage, let's go. One amp, that's a one ohm load, five amps. And we got point, point two four volts. As long as it's less than half a volt, I think we're fine. We want to make sure it's not changing too much. So as long as it's less than half a volt, point two is, is pretty good. So I would say that big blue is okay, and I can test the other big blue in the cabinet because it's a little bit easier to get to than this one. So I'm going to put all those back in the cabinet, and uh, this because it has two AR2s, there's two big blues, and I'll test the other one in the cabinet. Uh, yeah, looks good. All right, I got everything back in the cabinet here. Let's see if I can. Do it without so much brightness on that thing. So everything's kind of wired up. And I pretty much double checked. I don't have the coin door in. I put the uh, pedal in with its kind of weird setup down there. Because I just want to see what it does before I restore the pedal. And I haven't messed with the... Um, I just put the steering back in real quick. I have um, a spare pole position board in there because the other one with the battery acid damage is not fixed yet. So I'm going to power it up here. Let's turn on our meter. I'm hooked up to 5 volts. Alright, I'm going to plug it in. 
across your fingers that nothing blows up. Damn, I can't even see that. There we go. All right, five volts. Do we get noise? I don't hear anything. <laughs> All right, that's weird. Wonder what my voltage is on the other board. Doesn't look like the game's playing. Sure. Right. I, um, I was testing voltage on the graphics board. And I didn't have good voltage. I reseated the connector and just double checked a few things. It's powered on. All right, now we got five volts there. I did not have five volts there before. Is that off camera? We got boards booting. I got to turn down the brightness or something and probably adjust what uh, I don't know what I gotta do but I'm gonna turn down the brightness all right I got it um, not completely adjusted damn it my screens messed up but you can see like if I press the pedal it goes right to CD but there is a little bit of a slowdown effect like coming off of the pedal with that little switch there. So it goes right to CD. I can't remember what it's supposed to actually go to. So it's kind of interesting. The break is just goes right to AD, which I think is correct. This pretty cool sound effect. I don't know. I assume the speakers are wired up correct, but it's kind of weird. Certain sound effects d don't come out all the speakers. I don't know if that's the case or not. That sounds weird. Anyway, it's pretty cool. I need to adjust the monitor still. See if I can do this holding the darn thing. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. The steering wheel's better than my upright though, it feels better. It's a little bit slower because the pedal isn't is adjusted right. I don't know.
That, that sounds kind of cool. It's like a surround effect. Of All right, that's it, I think, for this video. I gotta still do a lot of more work.